So today, I want to share a bit on what's going on in the world right now. And I'm talking about Hamas. Now, we've all obviously all heard a lot about this phrase in the last couple of weeks. But the amazing thing is, is Hamas is actually found in our Torah portion this week. The idea of Hamas. And we'll see that a little bit later. So it's amazing to see that what's oftentimes when you read a Torah portion, you'll find parallels in the current climate of the world. So it's quite amazing to see last week and this week, this idea of Hamas is in both Torah portions in the season that we're in. We all know that we've just finished the uh, Feast of Tabernacles and the last eighth day, and that all represented the end of a cycle and the start of a cycle. And we could probably fairly say that the world literally changed from one cycle to another cycle on that day. And one thing that was highlighted to me was that the enemy knows when the feast days are. He knows exactly when they are. And it was, you may be aware or you may not, but that day that Israel was attacked on the 7th of October was 50 years to the day when they were last attacked on Yom Kippur, the Yom Kippur War in 1973. Again, attacked on a, on a Sabbath day, a, ho a high holy day, 50 years later to the day in the Hebrew calendar, they were again attacked on a high holiday. So the enemy knows when his appointed times are. So like I said, we have all heard and seen of the horrors that have taken place within the land of Israel over the last couple of weeks. We have all heard by now the word Hamas many times in relation to the terrorism organisation that have carried out the atrocities we have all seen and heard. There is a connection to this ideology from last week's Torah portion and also this week's Torah portion. Last week, the Torah portion ended with the sons of God doing wickedness on the earth. That Yahweh was sorry that he had made man and then said he would destroy them. That's how last week's Reading ended in Genesis chapter 6. Then it goes on to this week's portion, which I want to talk about Hamas. The first occurrence of this word in our Bibles are found in the following passage. Hamas is actually a Hebrew word. And it's found in this passage, which is at the very beginning of this week's Torah portion. Genesis 6. 11 to 13. And it says the earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth and indeed it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. The earth is filled with, with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So in this particular passage, the word Hamas is found twice. Literally in Hebrew. And it is the word violence. Quite amazing how that's the uh, Hebrew word meaning for the word Hamas. And we see that literally play out in our 21st century world. Literally, the meaning of the word violence and a terror organisation. Nothing new under the sun. This is way back in the beginning. As I said, if you want to know what happens in the end, go back to the beginning. Hamas is a word in Hebrew and also in Arabic. In Hebrew, Hamas means violence. Wrong. Also, physical violence. In general, it has the meaning of rude wickedness of men. And I find this amazing is that they're noisy, wild, 
and it also described as being ruthless. Literally, that's what this word means in Hebrew. I'm reminded of um, Ishmael and the Ishmaelites were described the same way, that they would be wild men fighting amongst themselves. We're still seeing that play out today. Again, something that's thousands of years old, nothing new under the sun. Now in Arabic, this is the word Hamasa in Arabic, and it means enthusiasm, fervor, zeal, fire, and eagerness. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. This is literally what it means in Arabic. And these are all the attributes and characteristics we see displayed from these very same people, this fervency, this, this fire, this enthusiasm to do wrong and come against God's people. And not only that, it's also found in another ancient language, which is probably a dead language now, and it's Akkadian. And in their language, it's Hamasu, and it means to oppress. This very ancient culture that were around the same time. And in their language, it means to oppress. I'll let you come to your own conclusions. So some examples of this word, Hamas. Some other examples I want to go through. And we find them in Psalm 11 verse 5. And it says, Yahweh tests the righteous. But the wicked and the one who loves Hamas, violence, his soul hates. It's a pretty strong verse. But the wicked and the one who loves Hamas, who loves violence, his soul hates. Another example is found in Psalm 18 verse 48. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me above those who rise against me. You have delivered me from the violent man. You have delivered me from Hamas. So these ideas I'm talking about today, these are ancient ideas. They're not new. And we see it with David and he was delivered from the very same ideology. He was delivered from the very same type of people, Hamas. Psalm 25 verse 19 Consider my enemies for they are many and they hate me with cruel which is a English translation of Hamas. In this particular verse it's translated as cruel. And they hate me with cruel hatred. So we see this same attribute and characteristic playing out before our very eyes. They still hate God's people with hatred. Now David was up against this many times. We, saw, we see all these attributes playing out before our very eyes. These attitudes towards the people of God are ancient. They go way back to Genesis chapter 6 to just before Yahweh flooded the earth because of Hamas. Because of this very same characteristic we're talking about. This spirit, and it is a spirit, this spirit of violence and all the other characteristics associated with the word Hamas has been from the beginning. It has manifested through many different people groups throughout the ages. Just to name some, we find these characteristics and attributes throughout history in the Assyrians. They were known as the most violent, horrific people on earth in the ancient world. Also in the Babylonians, they also displayed this characteristic and attribute. And this same thing will carry right through to the very end because we, talk, we see the uh, Babylonian and Babel and all that mentioned in the end of the book. 
Another group of people that were very aggressive and hostile towards God's people were the Philistines. And this is literally where Goliath came from. He was a Philistine. He came from these people. And we also see the Greeks and Romans also were against God's people. They displayed these same characteristics. And now through to today to the extreme groups of terrorism found in Islam who are literally against the people of God and God's people and have been for 1,500 years, 1,300 years, whatever it's been. But it's all rooted in Genesis chapter 6. Hamas. It's the same spirit just manifested through different groups. Now, the Greek word for Hamas, which we find in Genesis chapter 6, is Adikia. Adikia, this is the Greek word. Now, this means unrighteousness, violating law, and injustice. So this is the uh, the rabbis that translated the Hebrew scriptures into Greek chose to use this Greek word for Hamas, meaning predominantly to be unrighteous. Again, we need to understand what unrighteousness is from the Bible perspective, not from ours. And we find in examples of this in the following verses in Luke 13, 27. But he will say... I tell you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. So in this verse, it's the word iniquity. All you workers of unrighteousness. Hamas. Another example is found in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 6. Do not rejoice in iniquity, adikia, but rejoice in the truth. Do not rejoice in Hamas, but rejoice in the truth. Well, as we have all seen, especially in the last week, I think it's a real big shame many of the protests we have seen throughout the world are rejoicing in Hamas. What a scary proposition for those who rejoice with Hamas, for those protesters that are siding and rejoicing and celebrating what's taken place against God's people. I wouldn't like to be wearing those shoes. This is exactly what's going on. Do not rejoice in Hamas. Do not rejoice in violence. Do not rejoice in iniquity or unrighteousness. Another example is in 2 Peter 2.15. And they, it says they have forsaken the right way. What's the right way? The way of righteousness. And gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And we all know what uh, Balaam did and, and how he uh, entrapped the Israelites with schemes and plans for wages. This is exactly connected to Hamas today that we receive wages for unrighteousness. They are supported and sponsored by a regime that this spirit is the head of. And this goes back centuries and millennia to the Persian Empire. Nothing new under the sun. Unrighteousness, violence, cruelty, hatred, wickedness, ruthlessness, oppression is all directly connected to Hamas. And, the, and that ideology that wants to totally wipe out the people of God. Again, there is nothing new under the sun. And one of the main mantras of this ideology is a phrase that they speak, and it's from the river to the sea. 
Now, when they chant that, that means the total extermination of the Hebrew people. That's what they're saying. That's the spirit behind it. That's the attitude and aggression behind it. When they chant these things in their protest rallies, which a lot of them do when they hold up their placards and their signs, saying from the river to the sea, that's exactly what they mean. The total extermination of the state of Israel. And it has been from the beginning. Violence, wickedness, cruelty, hatred. The word Gaza comes from another Hebrew word, Aza. And this word Aza means strong, a strong city or a stronghold. Isn't that fascinating? When we look at the Gaza in modern times, it is like a stronghold. It is a city that has many tunnels underneath it. It's very hard to navigate through. Now this area of Gaza, on geographically on the map, is the same area that were inhabited by the Philistines. We're talking things that are ancient here. This geographical area goes back to the same area of the Philistines. The story of Samson. We all know Samson, the, the great, mighty, strong person. He was imprisoned in Gaza. In the land of the Philistines. Before regaining his strength and destroying a temple that was in Gaza, known as the Temple of Dagon. be an interesting study to see what Dagon was and what it stood for, because this is all connected to what we're going through today. But I'll let you do that on your own. But in this area, in this Gaza, where land of the Philistines, they worship the god Dagon and had a temple there which Samson destroyed. Consider this verse. Showing that this, these things go way back. Exodus 13 verse 17. Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the land of the Philistines. Gaza. Although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So this is why Yahweh took his people through the desert. They could have went up that strip. They could have went up that way, but God said not to go that way. That wasn't his way. Literally the Gaza Strip. Literally the land of the Philistines. Because they were warring. They were fighting each other. Because it says, lest they see that and grow faint hearted and turn back. God's way is through the wilderness. God's way is separated from those that are in the cities and the populated areas. He took them out into the desert, far away from all this stuff. Now, with all this being said, let us consider the words of Yeshua. I started out this teaching in the early chapters of Genesis, chapter 6. And we see in Hamas all the way back there in Noah's day. Remember, this is Noah's day, Genesis chapter 6. There was violence on the earth, but there was a man by the name of Noah. What's Noah's name mean? Comfort. So let us consider the words of Yeshua. Luke 17, verses 26 to 30. As it was... In the days of Noah. So it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah had entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. 
Even so it will be that in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So Yeshua is teaching us that what it was like in the day of Lot and Noah, there was violence, there was Hamas on the earth. And we're seeing this replay again today. There is this uprising of violence and it's happening on a global scale. It's not just restricted to the Middle East. We're seeing people uprise in every major city on earth. It's becoming global, the idea of violence and Hamas. And Yeshua said this is what it will be like before he returns. As it was in the days of Noah. What was it like in the days of Noah? Hamas. Violent. Cruel. People going against the ways of God. People attacking the people of God. I had this thought this morning. And the principle is first in the natural and then in the spiritual. What we're seeing playing out in the physical in the natural realm over the last two weeks, friends, this is just the start. This is going to go into the spirit. This is going into those people who are called by his name. This is what Yeshua was talking about in Luke. As it was in the days of Lot and Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So is what's going on today the end? Are the prophecies starting to be fulfilled? Now, there are those that are talking about Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is the God may God war. There are yet others that are stirring up things on the internet and making claims that, in my opinion, are careless and reckless at this point in time. Now, the date of this teaching is the 21st of October 2023 in Australia. The reason why I put a date stamp on this is that I, what I just said was in respect to everything leading up to today. Now things may and can change very quickly and prophecy may be starting to be fulfilled after this date. But for me, it is simply too early to be making such statements and claims. As I have said many times, prophecies are like a rear view mirror. One has to wait for events to first take place and then and only then can one say that was such and such a prophecy. But with that being said, what is happening right now could very well be the start of something. We will have to wait and see how it all plays out. But literally, the world could be changing before our very eyes. We could be living in prophecies that were spoken of centuries and centuries ago. But we will have to wait and see because there are many things in those prophecies that simply have not happened yet. They could. Again, we'll have to wait and see. But today I just wanted to highlight that the environment of the world we're in. It was part of our Torah portion this week that the world is full of violence. And we are seeing that before our very eyes, specifically against God's chosen people. Now, with that being said, God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And I believe that these type of things that happen are all through Israel's history. And the number one reason is to turn Israel around, that they would repent. Many things were going on that day that were unrighteous in the land of Israel. And what most people do not understand is that the majority of the population of Israel are not followers of God. They're secular. We are talking about the Holy Land here. We are talking about Jerusalem. We are talking about the, the, the place that God has the apple of his eye, that he watches over. He will do whatever he needs to do to turn his people around to call upon God once again. Israel does not need the United States. Israel does not need Canada, United Kingdom or Australia. Israel needs to call on Yahweh Elohim. 
They need to get their security and their strength and their victory from him and him alone. Israel needs to repent and they need to teshuva and they need to turn back and once again call upon the name of the Lord so that they will be saved. That's what this is all about, is God wanting to call his people back to himself. And as soon as they do that, look out to those who are coming against them. Look out for those that have displayed acts of unrighteousness and wickedness and hatred and cruelty to them. I would not want to be in those people's shoes. Well, Father, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that your word clearly reveals the end from the beginning, that these things that we are experiencing literally in our world today are nothing new under the sun. These things and atrocities and, and peoples have been from the very beginning. And Father, I pray over your people, us included in that. Father, I pray that you would give us wisdom, discernment, understanding. Father, I pray that we would always look to you as our strong tower, as our refuge, as our shield. Father, I pray that we would not be fearful about what's taking place before our very eyes because one of the things that your son said in Matthew chapter 24 describing the end times was to fear not. So Father, I pray that we would be people of faith and steadfastness and security because you are our God. You are our Elohim. And Father, that we would take this opportunity to be your light, to, sh to spread your hope to spread your good message, which is the gospel, to all those that are that are in fear, for all those that are concerned and worried. Father, may we have the boldness and courage to share the gospel because that's the only thing that's going to save mankind. Father, I pray that you will help us. Help us to remain sure, steadfast and strong in you and you alone. We bless you and we thank you that you are our God, you are our Elohim, and your word is truth and it will accomplish all that which is set forth to do. And we bless you and praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to watch this teaching. I would like to ask you if you would hit the like button and the subscribe button. This will help us get our teachings out in front of many, many more people. And also to turn on the notification bell so that you will receive an alert for when the latest teaching comes out. I would also like to encourage you that if you are ministered to and blessed by this teaching, that you would share your thoughts and your comments in the section below. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. For more information, please go to www.ancientfoundationbiblefellowship.com. Shalom.